Hello everyone, welcome to this video all about compass bearing problems, which is a type of question in measurement and data. We're going to focus on the topic of area in today's video. So to begin, let's start off by reading a short description of what you can expect in area related compass bearing questions. So area refers to the region enclosed by a boundary. In compass bearing problems, area usually refers to the area enclosed by a transportation's journey. Questions may use intercardinal points to refer to direction. For example, NE refers to some point between north and east, though usually it is uh, 45 degrees. For area questions, geometry is needed and it is useful to know Pythagoras' theorem. Okay, so... Uh, with Because we're dealing with area questions specifically for compass bearing problems, we can imagine that the compass itself is going to be quite relevant for these questions. So these questions will typically involve a person or some sort of object traveling in a bunch of directions. So maybe it'll describe a person walking north, then walking, uh, whoops, walking north, then walking east, then walking south, then walking west. And you can see that the direction this person has traveled in has created a square. And that then allows us to figure out the area of the square if we know how long or how far this person has traveled. So that means we need to be quite confident in knowing uh, which directions go where. And that is where I like the like using a mnemonic, which is called Never Eat Soggy Weebix, which just tells me how to draw out a compass for when I'm solving these questions. So we always start off with north and it goes never eat soggy wheat bix and that just tells me that north east south and west is in this specific order so that allows me to realize which directions this person or object is traveling in to physically understand what's going on in the question a related note would be just the importance of how drawing a diagram can really simplify the question. Even if there are a bunch of different steps involved, if you draw it out step by step, it's much easier to imagine what's going on and figure out the answer without making a mistake. So always draw out your compass with your Never Eat Soggy Wheat Bix trick and always draw out all the information provided in the question. Now, one last thing that is mentioned in the, uh, the description here was Pythagoras' theorem. So, realistically, there should be an apostrophe there because Pythagoras was a person. I believe he was a Greek mathematician in about 2000 years ago, and he made a lot of very important discoveries in mathematics that we actually use to this day. And one of those things is called Pythagoras' theorem. So to understand this theorem, uh, we need to know its purpose. And this theorem is used to figure out the length, a missing length of a right hand angled triangle. And you can see how that is important in compass bearing questions for area. Because we are realistically only traveling in straight lines for these questions, and these questions will have you going in north, east, south, west, or any diagonal in between, there isn't that many different shapes that you can create for these types of questions. At the end of the day, you're working with some form of rectangle, square, or right angled triangle. So we all know how to figure out the length and width of a rectangle or a square uh, and, and relate it to its area. But triangles are where it can be a bit tricky. So for example, if you have a person traveling south then east then back to, uh, northwest, you've created a right angle triangle. Now, if we want to know the length of any of these sides, it's actually uh, very simple to do using Pythagoras' theorem. So, Pythagoras' theorem works for any triangle 
with a right angle in it. So what the Pythagoras theorem says is we can give each of the three sides of the triangle a name just so we can uh, label each side easier. So let's give this A, B and C. So in this scenario, the C length is the longest side of the triangle and A and B are slightly the two shorter sides of the triangle. So what Pythagoras' theorem is, is that Pythagoras figured out 2000 years ago a very interesting thing that if you make squares out of the length of the triangle, so they look like this, where we can see these are all the same length, so they're squares, these are all the same length, and finally these are all the same length. A very, very funny thing is that if you add the areas of the square, so let's label the area of this square C, the area of this square B, and the area of this square A, if you add A and B together, you always get C. And that's a really, really interesting thing that allows us to figure out the area, sorry, the length of any given side of a triangle. So because these big letters are representative of the area, they're basically A squared. A is equal to A squared, B is equal to B squared, and C is equal to C squared, since A, B, and C are equal to the lengths of each of these squares. So that is, sorry, that is Pythagoras' theorem in a nutshell. If you add the two shorter lengths of a right-handed triangle, you will always get the length of the longer side as long as you square all of the pieces. And we're actually going to see how we might use this, uh, this theorem in this example question. So we'll test our understanding here. A plane flies 15 kilometers south, then 25 kilometers in a northwesterly direction. It flies back to its original position in the shortest path possible. What is the area of the figure formed by its flight? Okay, so remember our first step is to always transform the important parts of the information into form of a diagram. So starting off, just to make sure that my directions are clear, I'm going to draw my compass. So never eat soggy wheat bix just so I have a reference and make sure that I'm actually drawing the diagram properly. So we start off the plane flying 15 kilometers south. Then it flies 25 kilometers in a northwesterly direction. Then it flies back to its original position in the shortest path possible, so that must be in this direction. The question wants us to figure out the area of this path, and we can see that this is in fact a triangle. So we have a right angle angled triangle at play here, and to figure out the area of a triangle, we know the formula is half times the base times by the height. Now we're given the height of the triangle, but we're actually not given the length of the base. So we can't just use 25 kilometers because we know these are different lengths. So how do we figure out that missing length of the triangle? Well, that is exactly where Pythagoras' theorem comes into play. So this is the formula that we're going to use, which basically says we can figure out this missing length because, well, let's give this missing length a name. Let's just label it X so we know what side we're talking about when we're referring to this length. We know that if we take the length of X, square it, and add it together with the other short side of the triangle, which is 15 kilometers, square that, we get the, uh, the result, which is the longest side of the triangle, which we know to be 25 squared. So we can easily see that by rearranging this equation, we can figure out the correct answer or how long this missing length is. So that means uh, 25 squared is equal to 625 and 15 squared is equal to 225. So, sorry, this should be a square here. 625 minus 225 is equal to 400. So now that we know x squared has to equal to 400, we can square root both sides of the equation, which cancels out the square and we're left with x 
is equal to square root of 400, which is equal to 20. So we can see that's exactly how we can use Pythagoras' theorem to figure out the missing side of a right-angled triangle when two of its sides are known values. So that's the difficult part of the question done. All you need to do now is then use the formula for the area of a triangle to figure out the answer. So half times by 20 kilometers times by 15 kilometers, uh, that's going to equal to 150 kilometers. So the correct answer, sorry, squared is going to be option B. Okay, so we saw the important things in this question were that drawing a diagram really helps us uh, see exactly what's going on and utilizing Pythagoras' theorem in the scenario that a right angle triangle is there and we need to figure out the missing length of the triangle. So hopefully those are some techniques that will help you out when you're doing future area related compass questions. Thanks everyone so much for listening.